Hello again sports fans, today I'm testing the Quantum Overlord Diversity Video Receiver. I'll be using my uh, Texumo, which has been out of action for the last few weeks. It's been misbehaving very badly and I just found out that it's because I've been missing a 30 gram nose weight. So. That's been fixed, the plane's been re-trimmed, so everything should be hunky-dory today. Touch wood. We're clear for a hand launch, Tim. It's an absolutely glorious day here in Canberra. It's about 25 degrees, the wind's about 5 to 10 knots. Sunny. It's the best day we've had in months, so I've been looking forward to it. So the hand launch goes off fine, and I do a few circuits of the field just to uh, test the uh, autopilot functions are all working okay before uh, I head out towards um, Mount Tennant. So the plan is to fly out to the left of Mount Tennant, which is on the screen there, down the Mass Valley as far as I can until the video runs out. And hopefully that'll be past 7 kilometres, which is the furthest I've been so far. So, we uh, line up and I head off. I want to get up to around 400 metres of altitude, so I point the nose up and uh, just take it fairly easy. So this is the on-screen display that I'm looking at, so up in the left hand corner is the battery voltage and current drain, and on the right is the altitude, they're the things I'll be looking at mainly on the trip. I'd give it a bit of a kick in the guts to get up to the altitude uh, as quick as I can and the plan is to level off once I'm uh, up near 400 metres. So I'm about two and a half kilometres out but a lot higher than I had planned on being mainly because I've been uh, twiddling with the antenna trying to uh, improve the video signal and I tend to pull back on the elevator when I'm doing that. Coming up on the four kilometre mark, and I'm having to uh, jiggle the antennas around a fair bit. The video signal is breaking up. It's still flyable, but it's uh, it's annoying to have to uh, keep adjusting the antenna to uh, keep the signal. So coming up on five kilometres here, and uh, it starts to get really bad, and I'm actually thinking about turning around and heading back. I'm messing around with the antennas and eventually I do something right and it, uh, it comes good so I uh, decide to keep on going. But in the uh, period where I was messing around I've drifted uh, off course and uh, need to bring it back on. As you can see from the insert, the signal keeps fluctuating and I'm still messing around with the antennas trying to improve it. So we're at about 6 kilometres here and again the signal starts getting worse and I'm having trouble getting the picture and once again thinking about turning back but I uh, hold my nerve and eventually it does come good again. So just coming up on the 7 kilometre mark here, the uh, video is still breaking up all the time, requiring constant uh, twiddling of the antenna, but it's it's still flyable, but um, yeah, just not enjoyable. 
I'm uh, thinking I'm going to be able to get out past my seven and a half kilometer uh, personal best, so I'm hopeful of that. Once again, I'm paying too much attention to the antenna than I uh, actually drift off course. The video comes good enough for me to realise that I'm out past 7.8 kilometres, so I start to think, well, I might head back. But before I do, I think I'll go around in a circle just to see if the video signal improves as the attitude of the plane changes. And surprisingly it seems to, so I think I might carry on a little bit further. Unfortunately it's about this time that I accidentally hit the menu button on the Overlord panel and lose my video signal completely, so I whack the model in return to home mode and uh, start trying to figure out what I've done. I notice that I'm no longer on my flying channel so I increase the throttle to try and keep it airborne to give me enough time to run a channel scan and try and get it back. Unfortunately it looks like the signal's too weak for the uh, scanner to pick it up and I, I run three or four of them before it finally comes back close enough to uh, pick up. Needless to say I'm pretty pleased when it does. It was a pretty long uh, two minutes. So I'm inside five kilometres now and the video is still pretty scratchy and I'm still messing with the antenna. It's about now that I realise that I haven't reduced the throttle from my uh, panic when I lost the video signal so I've got that back down to a cruising speed but uh, I've used up quite a few milliamps that I didn't really need to use and I'll probably need So the battery drops down below 10.5 volts and I realise that I'm going to have to uh, conserve some power if I want to get home so I cut the uh, throttle down to about a quarter and uh, drop the nose and decide to try and sacrifice a bit of altitude for distance and hope that it'll be enough to get me home. So with the reduced throttle I'm not making a huge amount of uh, progress against the 10 kilometre headwind, but we're doing the best we can. So I get to within a kilometre and a half of home down at uh, about 150 metres, but the battery voltage is dropping fast. Unfortunately I can't maintain the altitude with the quarter throttle so I have to up that just to make some progress against the wind so it's going to be a fairly near thing. So I actually make it to within a hundred meters of home before the battery completely dies so I'm at 150 meters of altitude with no forward momentum but I look up and the plane is uh, pretty well hovering and it's, as it starts to lose altitude the autopilot is managing to keep it level. So I decide to just let it do its thing and see how it lands it by itself. And it does a damn fine job of it. I'm very impressed. The, uh, it was harder than a normal landing, but it landed perfectly flat. No damage whatsoever to the plane. So, pretty impressive effort. Well, that was a wonderful self-landing. I'm very impressed.
So, I must admit, I'm a bit disappointed with the old Overlord. It seems to be okay out to about three kilometres, but, but past that, it just drives me crazy fiddling with the antennas to keep a decent picture. I suspect it's because of the high gain of the patch antennas that the beams don't actually overlap, so there's gaps in between the coverage of the antennas, and the further out you go, the, the worse those gaps become. So what am I going to do? I think I could try lower gain patches, but I might try using the uh, antennas that I've already got to see if they make an improvement. So I've got some helicals. I've got a 12 turn and a 7 turn helical. And I've got my vast pepper box. So I might uh, start out by uh, swapping two or three of the uh, patches for these existing antennas just to uh, cover the uh, direction that I'm doing my distance flying in and see how we go.